Today we have the pleasure of welcoming Professor Michelle Gao from the University of Haifa to discuss her paper on 3D printing and the competition law and regulatory challenges it poses. And this is an up and coming field in the law and the implications of, the te of this technology are underexplored. And your paper, Ensuring Competition and Innovation in 3D Printing, um, struck me because it's not a subject that comes up much in business law blog context. So can you just explain, first of all, what is 3D printing and what piqued your interest in the subject? Right. Well, um, I agree that it's an exciting and new um, area and I was actually surprised when I researched that um, not a lot of people have focused on questions of competition and innovation in this context and that's um, uh, part of what the paper tries to do. So. Um, let me uh, tell you a bit about um, what piqued my interest and then I'll talk a bit about um, what 3D printing is about. So um, a few years ago, I was at the um, a museum, a museum of Art and Design in New York and they had this incredible exhibition about 3D printing. Um, and, and there was this one part where you could stand uh, you, um, in, in a defined space and move your body and the 3D scanner then uh, designed a lampshade it, that was based on the movement of your body and then printed it uh, uh, right away. And I thought that was really neat. Um, and um, several um, months ago, I sat with a very good friend of ours who is a C CTO of uh, a firm called PTC, which does um, uh, 3D designs. And he was really excited about working together with firms like Boeing and car manufacturers in order to create much better and innovative products using 3D technology. And that triggered my um, interest. And so I went back and I started reading about 3D. And the more I learned about it, the more I'm, I found this uh, really interesting. Now, what, what is 3D uh, printing? It's uh, actually a method of manufacturing. It's um, a better way to call it uh, is to call it additive manufacturing. And you can compare it to traditional manufacturing, where in traditional manufacturing, you usually have what is called a subtractive method. You have um, some material and you mold it or you take away parts of it using tools and machines in order to create a certain shape. Now, 3D printing is exactly the opposite. It's additive printing, where um, what you have is you have um, a printer, you have raw materials, and you have a design file. And what the printer does is it creates layers of products, uh, uh, layers of the product, which are then combined using heat, okay, in order to create um, the finished product. Okay, so... And are these products just plastic? So can they be different materials and the size of these materials? What sort of things can we, can we print? Good question. Um, you can use today, there are many different materials, inks, that you can use uh, in 3D printing. So it's not, uh, it, it can of course be plastic, but it can also be uh, clay and it can be um, glass and it can be paper, it can be uh, metal alloys, it can be titanium, it can be even human tissue, it can be food. <laughs> so uh, just think about the incredible possibilities that you have here. And by the way, some of the printers are already able to combine some of these inks or these materials together to create the finished product. So you can actually create a layer which is based, uh, which is um, comprised of many different uh, types of, uh, of materials. That's certainly surprising. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess given the scope of it um, and the potential for manufacturing and disruptive innovation, 
what are the implications for business or for business law? And what are the competition and the regulatory issues that you identify? Right. I think that the, um, the um, effects on business uh, are um, potentially huge. Um, the effects are on the firm level. They're on the market level, the market structure level. They're also on a wider social level, uh, if you want. Uh, because by using 3D printing, um, you might change internal structures of firms, uh, at least in some cases. Uh, because instead, for example, of buying different parts from your different suppliers, if you can print the whole wing, for example, by yourself, then this affects vertical relationships in the market. It also affects internal structure of the firm. Mm. Um, it has a lot of effects on competition because it affects many, many parts of the supply chain, creating um, lower entry barriers into some parts of the supply chain and completely eliminating sometimes uh, other parts of the supply chain. Mm. And it has very significant effects on dynamic efficiency and on innovation, both positive and negative. Mm. And in terms of the sort of societal welfare considerations, so if I can simply take a number of photos, different angles of a, an object, print it at home, in a way that you know there's an opportunity for theft of the intellectual property, in, in the same way that you know in previous decades, music, illegal music downloading was an issue. Does 3D printing pose regulatory challenges of, of that nature from a competition or an IP perspective? Definitely. I would say that this is one of the largest issues that ha we have to think about when we talk about 3D printing. Because 3D printing um, um, can usually use, it, it, it can use a, 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 it uses a design file um, a, and a printer and raw materials. Or the design file can be a file that you created, that somebody else created. And it can also be a file that um, um, by using a 3D scanner or by using images of any product, any physical product, it actually, uh, the design file uh, replicates that um, image and then you can print it on your own printer. So that creates significant uh, issues with regard to the ease of copying. Right. Because now the ease of copying, not only digital files, like we had already, we dealt with with regard to music or to media. Now the copying of physical images mm. is going to be easier. Mm. And of course, when copying becomes easier, that affects the incentives of firms to mm. innovate in the first place. Mm. Okay, why would you design something if it's easy for others to then copy it? What do you get out of the first design if it doesn't take long for others to enjoy it as well? Okay, so first mover advantages here are lower. You might not get the credits for what you've done. And there are many issues uh, uh, that uh, arise here. Um, however, um, I think it's also uh, important to think about some of the uh, characteristics of the technology of 3D technologies that, that, that might limit this concern because some people have um, put much emphasis on this concern and I think it's also important to think how real it really is. So I would suggest that there are at least three considerations that go the other way here. First is the materials, okay? Not all the materials can be copied. Mm -hmm. And although we use, we can use a lot of materials today, much more than in the past, mm -hmm. and 3D printing. Again, again, we cannot use all of them, and not all 3D printers can use all the machine, all the, all the material. So home printers, which are used by the end user in his home, are usually quite limited in the materials that can be used. So that the copying with regard to certain products is going to be relatively uh, uh, limited uh, there. The second thing is that um, uh, time, time. It might take a long time to print an object on a 3D printer, much more than if you have mass production. Right. 
So if you want many objects of a certain kind, it might be more efficient just to go and buy it in the store rather than copy it uh, 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 yourself. And the third observation here is that uh, 3D printing reduces the sunk costs of uh, creating some objects. And if that is true, then you might be able to recover the cost of your design file, of your design efforts, much easier. So that even if some people copy your own uh, a physical object, it, you might still have an economic incentive to invest. Okay. So, so I guess to step back then, in competition, not broadly, we're sort of concerned with healthy and efficient markets. And you're right. saying that 3D printing has the potential to alter the incentives of you know, producers along the supply chain, which might prevent the efficient markets that are good for society. And in your paper, you've mentioned some of the specific regulatory challenges too that might result. Um, so can you inform our readers what those might be and potential solutions or problems? Sure. So the paper identifies three challenges, um, regulatory challenges, based on the uh, characteristics of the technology. Um, and the first is something that we touched upon right now is innovation incentives. I mean, do we have uh, already enough innovation incentives to create the technology and create the design? Part of the problem is exactly what we said now, that the, the technology itself um, creates, with regard to at least some products, easier coffee. Mm -hmm. It's not the only concern. Another concern has to do with the fact that 3D printing can have significant effects on welfare, uh, which might not necessarily be captured by private firms. Mm -hmm. Let me give you some examples, please. Yeah. Um, think about uh, population dispersion. Many countries would like their populations to be dispersed over larger parts of their countries, yeah. right? However, if you, if you uh, live in a remote area, uh, it might be that the cost of shipment to that remote area would be high. It might take a long time for certain products to get to your remote area. So the quality of life of living in that remote area might be lower than sitting in population centers, at least with regard to the products that you can enjoy. Um, however, if, I, if you can print, if you can uh, be in a remote area, and print your own uh, uh, products just by using a design file and a 3D printer, that might increase the quality of your life and that might affect population dispersion. Mm. Okay, it might, so this is only one example yeah. of how it changes, uh, um, um, it has broader uh, socioeconomic effects. Let me give you another example. Let's say that your country has high wages of workers. And so that a lot of the work of the assembly and the manufacturer is done elsewhere. It's done where it's much cheaper and then it's brought in or shipped in. Uh, um, however, if the cost of manufacturing, if assembly is not so important anymore because the 3D printer assembles with, uh, by a way which is called assembly by design, you simply design the product to include uh, uh, many of the components, so you need less assembly. That means that you can produce it closer to the end consumer. Okay, so that affects inter that affects international trade uh, patterns. And assuming that these kind of considerations are important for governments, okay, and, and for our welfare, we would like investments in 3D printing to reflect them. Mm. However, um, private firms might not take such considerations into account. International trade patterns, uh, for example, or the ability to live in remote areas. Private firms might care about these, uh, but not take, them, um, uh, be, uh, not take them into account because they do not necessarily affect their bottom, uh, um, um, their um, uh, bottom line uh, um, of revenues. Right. Okay. 
And if that is the case, then we need to think about how to create correct incentives with regard to 3D printing. And one way, of course, around it, not the other, the, uh, the only way, of course, but one way around it is through subsidy of at least the development of some kind of 3D printing. Mm -hmm. Let's say the printing of DNA sequences, mm -hmm. which might solve some cancer, mm -hmm. uh, um, um, some of the cancer problems um, in the foreseeable future. And um, uh, um, the printing of artificial limbs or things mm -hmm. that really make a change yeah. in one's life. So that's one issue. Then the paper looks at um, issues that have to do with access barriers to markets mm -hmm. and looks at private access barriers and which are um, created by private firms and which are natural because once you disrupt the market, like 3D technology can do, um, it's only natural that incumbents will have an incentive to stay the status quo and they might use all kinds of methods, um, um, anti-competitive contracts, uh, abuse of uh, power, killer mergers, whatever, in order to uh, limit access into markets. These are issues that competition law, for example, can uh, solve uh, uh, many of them. Um, uh, we might need to tweak uh, or change our laws with regard to some of them, but the basis is there. Another major issue here with regard to access barriers is are, uh, are access barriers which are created by governments. Mm. And these might be regulations that go too far, that are simply unbalanced. Mm. Because as we already discussed, 3D technology creates um, not only positive effects, but it might also have some negative effects, which should be acknowledged, should be regulated. But the question is whether the regulation is balanced and takes into account the positive effects and the negative effects um, uh, as well. And the paper goes through all kinds of um, uh, uh, um, reasons why a regulation might not be balanced and it uh, suggests that the competition authority have an advisory role here in suggesting the competitive and innovative effects of 3D printing. And lastly, the, the third challenge has to do with the market power of firms in the supply chain. Uh, now, I must say that 3D printing sometimes eliminates parts of the supply chain assembly. It might not be important anymore with regard to some finished goods, right? If you can print it all yes. as one part, um, and it might be there's going to be much more competition in other parts, for example, design. If it's easy to create a design file and you don't actually need to do much more in order to enter the market, mm -hmm. we might see more competition and less market power. Mm -hmm. However, there are some segments in which you might see market power. For example, um, firms that have uh, IP rights on unique printers or on unique materials or plat uh, design uh, platforms which sell designs. Mm -hmm. um, and there, um, issues that we see in other industries uh, might arise as well. And again, competition law has an important role to play there. Wow. We've covered a lot of ground today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've looked at you know, the, the, the smallest items printed from 3D printers to the entirety of markets and, and the effects. Right. Um, if we were just to step back before we conclude and ask, how would you summarize maybe the main takeaway of your paper in one or two sentences to our viewers? Okay, so the first one is that 3D definitely has disruptive effects on many levels and many of them are positive. So that would be one takeaway. The second takeaway is because it has such a potential for disruptive effects, we need to look carefully at its characteristics and create regulation that deals with them. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Gal. Thank you, time. it's and a pleasure.